Well, very good morning to everyone and welcome to our prayers on this Monday, the 17th of January. Let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you love us. And nothing can ever take that away from us. Even if we fail today and fall short, you will whisper your unconditional love into our souls and spirits to remind us that your mercies are new every morning and that truly amazes us. Amen. Now we do not come lightly into God's presence this morning. The prophet Zechariah reminds us that we come as if clothed in dirty rags because of our sins. So in a few moments of silence, let us recall the things we have done or not done, which create the Father heart of God. And we'll be using the Kyrie responses, Lord have mercy, and to Christ have mercy. Heavenly Father, wash away all our iniquities and cleanse us from our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Against you, you only have our sin and done what is evil in your sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Create in us a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God our Father forgive us our sins and bring us to the eternal joy of his kingdom, where dust and ashes have no dominion. Amen. The psalm for us this morning is Psalm 145. Psalm 145. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another and they tell of your mighty acts. You speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and they all meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, and rich in love. The Lord is good to all he has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, O Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominions endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him and all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. 
Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Psalms 145 to 150 are psalms of praise to God. Every day I will praise you. We have many things too numerous to recall, for which we are grateful to God, not least the gift of this new day in our lives. Verse 6 reminds us of the ancient tradition of passing on to children and children's children the mighty acts of God. And verse 6 speaks of God's forgiveness when we repent of our sins. God is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. May we today not miss any opportunity to tell others of the awesome works of God in our lives and put into practice verse 21. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord that every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Amen. Old Testament reading is from Genesis, chapter 6, reading from verse 11. Genesis, chapter 6, reading from verse 11. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I'm surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make for yourself an ark of cypress wood and make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide and 30 cubits high. Make a roof for it, leaving below the roof an opening one cubic high all round. Put a door in the side of the ark and make lower, middle, and upper decks. I'm going to bring floodwaters on the earth to destroy all life on the heavens. Every creature that has breath of life in it, everything on the earth will perish. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you will enter the ark, you and your sons, your wife and your sons, and your son's wives with you. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal, and of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it away as food for you and for them. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. The Lord then said to Noah, go into the ark and your whole family, because I have found you righteous in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of every kind of clean animal, a male and its mate, and one pair of every kind of unclean animal a male and its mate, and also seven birds, seven pairs of every kind of bird, male and female, to keep their various kinds alive throughout the earth. Seven days from now I will send rain on the earth for forty days and forty nights, and I will wipe from the face of the earth every living creature I've made. And Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. Noah was 600 years old when the floodwaters came on the earth. 
and Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives entered the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Birds of clean and unclean animals, of birds and of all creatures that move along the ground, male and female, came to Noah and entered the ark as God had commanded Noah. And after seven days, the flood waters came on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We often speak about the faith of Abraham and Moses, but I think we have here in this Old Testament reading an even greater faith in Noah's family as they received the instructions from God to build an ark. Because God intends to flood the world because of the people's sinfulness. Noah's family have faith that God knows what he is doing. Noah would have been ridiculed and laughed at as he stepped out in faith to build the ark. We're unlikely to be asked to do anything as awesome as Noah and his family were. But there may be times when God challenges us to do a new work for him, to further his kingdom and ministry here on earth. May we be prepared to respond prayerfully to do anything which God calls us to do. Notice also that God didn't just tell Noah to go and build an ark and then leave him to work it all out on how to do it. God gave specific detailed instructions we too should be confident that God will provide all things necessary when we respond to a new work or a calling. New Testament reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, from verse 1. Chapter 24, from verse 1. Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to his buildings. Do you see all these things, he asked. Truly, I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, proclaiming, I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. But you will hear of wars and rumours of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you'll be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. And you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of mercy will grow cold. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now to the Jewish nation, the temple was the centre of worship took immense pride in the building, 
and for Jesus to predict its destruction would not have gone down well with the religious authorities. Even the disciples are curious as to its meaning. Some scholars think that from verse 1, Jesus left the temple for good, never to return, and simply walked away. Later on, the Mount of Olives, the disciples have a few questions and are curious as to when Jesus' predictions will happen. As is the case so often, Jesus doesn't give a direct answer, but tells them to be on their guard. They will suffer persecution, and most of them will be martyred. A prediction which was fulfilled. Certain so-called prophets throughout history have thought that the end time is near, even some mentioning a specific date. No doubt some are seeing the pandemic of COVID-19 as a sign of end times. But the key, key, the key phrase, I think, is in verse 6. But see to it that you are not alarmed. You should not be anxious about the time of Jesus' return, but be ready, waiting for it, safe in the knowledge that nothing, neither wars, earthquakes, or famines, can separate us from the love of God. Come now to our time of prayer. Our response to Lord, hear us, is Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the many people who have accessed worship services online. Please continue to bless these and other initiatives of churches and ministries which, as your church, I'll say that again. Please continue to bless these and other initiatives of churches and ministries which offer spiritual and practical advice as your church moves into a new normal. As our clergy, Garth and Ian, together with Paul Lawler, our rural dean, as the deanery plans are put into place. We pray for the Church of St. Leonard's Beely in our deanery, asking you, Lord, to bless their outreach to Churchill and Abbey Park, and for the growth of their work with children and young people. Together with the ministry of their pastoral care team. Bless and protect our Lord, their clergy, Gail Rogers, Paul Lawler, Francis Maloney, Richard Clark, together with their LLMs, Norma Walters, Margaret Lloyd, and Enid Mullins. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Pray that all may play their part, however small, in reducing CO2 emissions and plastic waste before more irreparable damage is done to God's world. Bless all initiatives and organisations that provide food for those less well off. Give strength to all who work in food banks, particularly giving thanks and praying for those members of our church involved in the local food bank. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, give wisdom to our government and all health advisors as they work to contain the Omicron virus. With our hospitals once again reaching full capacity, encourage all to be vaccinated and practice social distancing when outdoors. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We now pray for all known to us who are in any kind of healing, in any need of healing, from illness of body, mind or spirit. 
together with those mentioned in our new shit, the weekly catch. We pray particularly for Norman and Chris Tilly. And for those with long term illnesses, Graham Twist, Betty Wood, Tia, Kate Bainbridge, Andrew Johnson, Alex Street, Peter Barcham, Erica Dilger, Michael Hawkins, Mark Brunner, Linus Houghton, Linda Grummet, Jane Gray, Ira Dutton, Karen Lumley, June Gillett, Elsie, Delia Davis, Lorraine Alice, David Spencer, Irene Spencer, Steve, John Stain, Anne Jones, Phyllis Griffiths, Kalida, Ellis Eilif, and for my wife Helen. May the healing mercies of our risen Lord Jesus Christ enter into all their souls, minds and bodies, bringing healing, comfort and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We remember now those whom we know grieving the loss of a loved one. We pray for the comfort of Christ to surround and lift them up at this difficult time. Particularly praying for Alan Mantell and his family, grieving the loss of Anne. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Gathering all our prayers into one, we are bold to pray the prayer which Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining with me this morning. And God willing, we can all meet again tomorrow at 10 o'clock. The final prayer. Lord, may nothing separate us from you today. Teach us to choose only your way today. So each step will lead us closer to you. Help us to walk by the word and not our feelings. Help us to keep our hearts pure and undivided. Protect us from our own careless thoughts, words and actions. Keep us from being distracted by our wants, our desires and thoughts on how things should be. Help us to embrace whatever comes our way as an opportunity to serve you rather than a personal inconvenience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we go out into this day in the light and the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.